Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell. Welcome to the Dice Tower, the best of 2017. And today we're talking about the top 10 children's games that came out in 2017. I have seven kids from ages 3 to 17, so I get a chance to play a lot of kids' games across the board and see how they work. And I think there were some excellent games that came out this year. I am ranking these and putting these on the list based on how much I saw my kids enjoy these games. So... Uh, keep that in mind, right? It's not necessarily ones that I would always want to play, although many of these I did enjoy, but how much my kids like them. Number 10 is Terrorize. This is from Yellow Games, in which on your turn, uh, you're going to be rolling some big dice that show eyeballs, and you're putting them in the, the insert of this game to make a monster with different eyes that are going to match a card. While you're doing that, though, Everyone else is rolling a die, and they're trying to roll a die with a hand that says stop. And so now it's my turn to roll the dice, and I'll finish the card. No, I roll the stop. And so then also, if someone rolls an exclamation point, they can make you do something weird, like you have to count to 20 before you can continue. This is silly fun, and the kids loved it. It looks good. You get to build a little monster, but also letting you do silly, fun, entertaining things works too. Number nine is Yummy Yummy Pancakes. Who doesn't like pancakes? Well, actually, probably a lot of people, but still. In this game, you have a pan that comes with these little plastic pancakes. They almost look like um, kids' food that you'd buy in the, in the toy section. But on each side of the, on one side of the pancakes are different types of pancakes, because strawberry pancakes and chocolate pancakes. Why would you not want that stuff? And on your turn, you flip them. Everyone sees what's in the pot. You flip them, and then each other player is going to guess one of the face down ones. If they're correct, they get it. If not, you get it. So there's the whole dexterity thing of flipping the pancakes, which everyone likes, but also a small memory game because you, you saw what happened before they were flipped. If only three pancakes get flipped over, you probably know which ones are. So you want to flip over as many as you can to make it harder for the other players so you can get more pancakes. Silly, definitely for kids, yummy, yummy pancakes. Number eight is the legend of Wendigo. Now this you know, Bigfoot, ooh, scary uh, camp stories. And, and in this game, uh, one player is the Wendigo, and they are. there's a bunch of tiles out on the table, and as the other kids are not looking, they're going to be taking these tiles and they're turning them into Wendigos. And so the other kids are watching and looking around and trying to figure out which changed, what is something different on the board. And it's actually pretty hard for the Wendigo player in a bigger group of a game, but in a small setting with just a few players, it works really well. And kids like that whole one versus many aspect that this game brings. Also, fun artwork. Number seven is Captain Silver. This is a tactile game in which each player has a bag that they're going to be reaching into and pulling out different, you know, piratey shaped objects. They're going to be using these to move on this board, which is going to score points, let them move their ship around a track, which will do other things for them. It's a speed tactile game. Probably many adults would not like it, but kids enjoy it, pulling something out. That's the wrong thing. Or this is the one that lets me move here on the board. Uh, and they're looking, and, and the things they need to pull out of their bag are going to change constantly depending on how other players are moving on the track. It's an entertaining game, Captain Silver. Number six is Cargolino Valentino. This is a snail racing game in which your snail you want to be last. First of all, kids get a blast out of this. This whole concept of, hee hee hee, I want to be last. But also, no one knows who anyone's snail is. So on your turn, you're rolling some dice, and you can move their, their colored dice, and you move the snail that is that color, or you move a snail that's on a space of that color. So sometimes you don't really have much of an option, but you're always trying to move other people's snails farther ahead than yours. The game is two different races. You reset each time. You get points for how far back your snail is. Kids get the whole hee hee hee. No one knows who I am. And I'm also trying to be last. That silliness works together. Makes a pretty solid game. Cargolino Valentino. Number five is Mole Rats in Space. Now, Mole Rats in Space is almost feels like... Um, a mass market style game that's cooperative because in this game players are working together to move their mole rats around on a ship and get them to the middle without having them run into snakes because snakes are bad and so on your turn you essentially have two different options you're going to roll a die and move something in that and that in one of the two different directions so it's not a lot of choice this is definitely geared towards the smaller kids but together the players are working together and if there's one thing kids need to learn it's a sense of cooperation and this game does a good thing it's actually designed by matt leacock better known for pandemic fame and it, this one comes together for young children as they try with also with the whole spaceship and avoiding snakes aspect 
and sometimes you got to move those snakes and you're trying to get the snakes out of the ship out of out of out of the way just fun for everybody number four is problem picnic attack of ants this is a game that might be geared a little bit more towards somewhat older children as you have these dice which have ants on each side instead of pips and you're going to be rolling these dice into cards trying to get your there's different cards out there with food trying to get the ants that your ants to control different cards and there's different size dice too so you maybe you're trying to knock other people's dice off or just get yours on there to control it it works really well for kids um i'm actually for families too and some and whoever is losing gets some gets a special ability that they can do i have a shoe a person stepping down on this just fun all around and a very unique theme and who doesn't like messing around with ants number three is topito this is a stacking game of circus or big giant chunky blocks. It almost looks like preschool, but the game isn't. You have these secret missions, which says you need to have the clown on top of the elephant. And so on your turn, you can move one block to another one or add a new block to a pile. But if you move a block, you also have to move the blocks on top of it. So there's a dexterity element to this, but there's also a thinking element as the kids are going to sit there and go, how do I get this from one spot to another? I need to have this thing there. It's not that complex, but I love the idea of mixing dexterity with thinking and also really high quality components with the circus theme. I really like it, Topito. Number two is Dr. Microbe. Now, Dr. Eureka was a game that I gave a lot of accolades to for the thing I just said, mixing dexterity with thinking. I like that concept and how it comes together. And Dr. Microbe is another one in their line. And in this one, you'll flip over a card and it will show you what, you know, what things you need to have in your little Petri dish. And so you take your tweezers and you're moving stuff around and trying to grab things. And again, this works really well. That whole idea of moving things around, it has a cool look to it. And it has almost a little bit of an educational flair to it as you're learning about microbes. Um, but that it's not as good maybe as Dr. Eureka because Dr. Eureka is like on another level. Um, but this one is excellent as my number two. And my number one, also same company, also same kind of thing. And that's Gogo Gelato, which I like just a hair less than Dr. Eureka because I like the theming so much more. And that is because it's about ice cream or gelato, I guess. Um, and in this game, you have these ice cream. I'm just going to call it ice cream now. Ice cream cones. And you are putting them on top of each other using the different uh, cones to move back and forth. You're going to flip over a card. It says this cone needs to have this on it. This cone needs to have this on it. And so you're just going back and forth trying to figure it out without dropping the ice cream on the floor because that's always a bad thing. Again, great dexterity mixed with thinking ahead and planning ahead. That is an excellent combo that I highly recommend for kids. So there you go. That's my top 10 games for kids from 2017. Agree? Disagree? Have games and you're like, how could you have missed this game? Well, the comments are your place for that. Let other people know about great games. Until next time, though, I'm Tom Bassel and you've been watching the best of 2017 on The Dice Tower.